Good morning, boys and girls. I would like to introduce you today to the 31st character in the Mr. Men series by Roger Hardgraves, and his name is Mr. Tall. And of course, you can see straight away why he is called Mr. Tall, because he has very, very, very long legs. And if we were to ask Mr. Bump or Mr. Worry or Mr. Strong or Mr. Greedy, they would all agree that Mr. Tall is the tallest person that they have ever met in their life. Now, Mr. Tall has very, very long legs. And whenever he went to bed, he had to sleep with his knees pointing up because his legs were too long for the bed. Oh dear, dear, Mr. Tall said one morning to himself, I wish I had not got very, very, very long legs. So he went for a walk to think it over. What could I do about my long, very long legs? He walked over a house. He walked over a bus. He walked over a car. He walked over a tree. And that morning as he walked over the tree, he heard a little voice whispering, Mr. Tall, Mr. Tall, Mr. Tall. And he looked down and he couldn't see anybody. And then below one of the very smallest branches in the tree, he saw Mr. Small. And he says, oh, Mr. Small, you're so small. I hardly didn't see you at all. But he bent down and he looked into Mr. Small's face. And Mr. Small said to Mr. Tall, you don't look very happy, Mr. Tall. No, I'm not happy. It's these very, very, very long legs. I wish I didn't have them. To cheer him up, Mr. Small decided, let's go for a walk together. Of course, that was difficult because Mr. Tall had very, very long legs and Mr. Small, well, he had very, very short legs. He could hardly keep up. So Mr. Tall, well, he had a brainwave. He picked Mr. Small up, set him on top of his head like a hat, and before they knew it, boys and girls, they were at my favorite place, the seaside. Oh, delighted, Mr. Small said, let's go for a swim. But I cannot swim, Mr. Tall said, because my legs are far, far too long. By the time I would get into deep water, I would be over in France. So Mr. Tall, he sat on the top of the cliff with his legs into the sand, and he had a very sad face. Along came a man called Mr. Tickle. What's wrong with you, he asked. You've got a big, sour face. Here was the answer. My legs are far, far too long. Oh, don't worry about that, said Mr. Tickle. So are my arms. But my long arms are all the better for tickling. Would you like a tickle, Mr. Tall? No, I would not. Then along came another man, Mr. Nosey. He asked the same question. What's wrong with you, Mr. Tall? Why are you so sad? He complained, my legs are too long. So very, very, very long. Don't worry about that, Mr. Nosey said. So is my nose. It's all the better for poking into other people's business. And off he went. Along came Mr. Greedy. Why are you so sad, Mr. Greedy asked Mr. Tall. He got the same answer. My legs are very, very, very long. Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Greedy said. So is my tummy. And he patted his big, big tummy. It's all the better to be filled with food. Then Mr. Tall, he gave a laugh, boys and girls. Ha, 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 ha. He had a big smile on his face. He had a big grin. And he thought to himself, if Mr. Tickle's legs or arms are too long, and Mr. Nosey's nose is too long, and Mr. Greedy's belly is too big, then it's okay for me to have long legs because they're all the better for walking. And boys and girls, in four minutes, he walked home 40 miles from the coast back to his house. And it took Mr. Small a very, very long time to get home. Now, Mr. Tall, boys and girls, got me thinking. Is the word tall mentioned in the Bible? 
And I have discovered something very important, and I want you to listen to me. I want you to think of the number of Mr. Tall. I wonder what was the number of his house. I wonder, could it be number six? Because you see, there are six references to the word tall in the Bible. And six, of course, in the Bible is the number of man. It represents mankind. The first reference is in Deuteronomy 1 verse 28. Deuteronomy 2 verse 10. Deuteronomy 2 21. Deuteronomy 9 and 2. Four references in the book of Deuteronomy. The last book of the law. And then 2 Kings chapter 19 23. And Isaiah 37 verse 24. And of course, the Assyrians at one time boasted of how big and tall they were. And they were going to defeat the little small people called the children of Israel. You see, the number six represents proud man. Men who live independent of God. Men who see their tallness and their bigness as an advantage over other people. And of course, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six, 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 six. So when I think of Mr. Tall, with his very, very long legs, I'm thinking of the number of Mr. Tall. Six references, boys and girls, in the Bible. And of course, six is the number of a proud, independent man. Let's think also of the nature of Mr. Tall. Maybe you're thinking as you're looking at this picture, wouldn't it be wonderful to be a Mr. Tall? You could walk over buses. You could walk over cars. You could even walk over houses to get to your house. But I'm not so sure. You think of the tallest person you know and ask them, do you like being tall? What if they bump their head in the door because they have to bend down every time they go in? What if they go to the shop, they buy trousers and the trousers don't fit? What would it be about being laughed at for having long, lanky legs? You see, Mr. Tall, remember, had a few problems being Mr. Tall. And one of the problems was he didn't sleep well because he couldn't stretch out his long legs in the bed. The bed was too short. His legs were too long. And he had to sleep with his knees up. Maybe you think to yourself, well, you know what? I would rather be a Mr. Small than a Mr. Tall. I love being the shortest or the smallest boy, maybe in your classroom or in your family. But even when you're Mr. Small, you still have some problems. There's books high up and a shelf that you can't reach. Maybe that faraway cupboard, you have to get a chair to reach up to it. Or you need somebody taller than you to reach up and fetch what you want. Maybe you're called shorty by your friends. Maybe your trousers are too long and you have to be taken up. You see, that got me thinking of the nature of Mr. Tall. Mr. Tall was the way God made Mr. Tall. And Mr. Small was the way God made Mr. Small. Isn't it amazing that we're not all the same? Isn't it amazing that we're not all the same size or they're not all the same shape? Isn't it amazing that we're all different? We're all unique. That's the way God made us. Surely we could say this morning, well, there's only one Hannah and one Bethany and one Sarah Jane and one Rihanna and one Joanna and one Miriam Rose and one Gabby. And I named some of the girls. Why? Because that's the way God made us. And the Bible says we're fearfully and we're wonderfully made. And the nature of Mr. Tall is just to remember that that's the way God made us. And we're to accept each other as the way we are. And of course, that's a great thing that Mr. Tall discovered, accepting his very, very long legs, for they were useful for walking. But I want you to think of one final thing. Think of the need of Mr. Tall. See, Mr. Tall couldn't change his appearance on the outside. 
Because on the outside, we're the way that God made us. And we have to accept that's the way God made us. And of course, then once we accept that's the way God made us, then we, we're happy and content within ourselves. But I'm not just thinking of Mr. Tall on the outside. I'm thinking of Mr. Tall on the inside. And of course, you see, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 and 9 that man looketh in the outward appearance, but God looks in the heart. And when God looks on the inside, he sees every man, Mr. Tall, Mr. Short, Mr. Bump, Mr. Greedy, Mr. Strong, Mr. Happy, Mr. Misery. He sees every one of us that we have a great need, and that need is a new heart. Because when God looks on the inside, what does God see? He sees sin in our heart, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He sees that we're selfish. He sees that we're spiteful. He sees that we're envious. He sees that we're covetous. He sees that we're jealous. And of course, the wonderful news of the gospel is this, boys and girls and young people, that the Lord Jesus came into the world, was born for sinners, lived a sinless life for sinners, died an atoning death for sinners, shed his precious blood on the cross. And of course, through trusting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and knowing the um, regenerating power of the Holy Spirit, we can receive a brand new heart. God takes out the heart of stone and gives a heart of flesh. And therefore, we can be in Christ a brand new person. The Bible tells us a wonderful message in the book of Corinthians. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new and all things are of God. And I want you to remember Mr. Tall, his number. It represents the number six because there's six references in the Bible. Think of the nature of Mr. Tall. He couldn't change his outward appearance because that's the way God made him. And to be happy and content, he had to accept that and you do the same. And then think of the need of Mr. Tall, not merely on the outside, but in the inside. He needed a brand new heart. And I would say to you today, you need a brand new heart even to live for God and to love him. And we commend this little message to you and pray that God will richly bless you and thank you again for listening and paying attention. Amen.